What's up everybody, thank you for joining me. I'm a guy called Joe and this is Bootstrapping Tools Let's Build, where we help scrappy bootstrappers just like yourself figure out how to scale their operations without having to scale headcount. Now, before we dive into today's topic, make sure to check out our YouTube channel. We got lots of videos up there that go through all sorts of low code and no code solutions out there, such as Retool, Airtable, Google Data Studio, as well as many others. Now, if you don't see an application that you're looking for, feel free to shoot us an email at feedback at bootstrapping.tools. We'll be happy to take a look at that app and possibly make a video just for you. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how you can merge data from multiple spreadsheets programmatically. And this is super helpful. Instead of having to you know, type everything out uh, individually, you can just have a script that will take all the different spreadsheets that you have, well, not spreadsheets, but the different sheets that you have, all those different tabs, combine it into the formula that you need to display it in one combined sheet so that you can use that to report off of or lay on top of it data studio or another bi tool that you might be using but uh there's lots to cover so let's go ahead and just dive right into it all right so up on the screen here we have our sample data set of hiring data uh, that we used in our last video that taught us how to actually use the query formula in addition to the curly brackets in order to merge multiple uh, data arrays together and use that as a data set to query and display it all into one combined um, sheet. Now, if you missed that video, uh, just take a look at the description. We have, we're we're going to include a link over there. So uh, you can watch that video to learn how to use this formula here. But if you already know how, just go ahead and keep watching this video. There's one's not dependent on the other. We're, we're also going to quickly explain it while we're going through this process. But essentially, in that video, we were manually typing out each individual sheet along with the range that we want to combine together. And as you can see here, we have much more than just March. So there's way more than just three sheets over here. We actually have it going all the way through to October. So we want to combine all of this without having to write it, especially if you are consistently adding more tabs to your data set. Uh, maybe for this one, doesn't uh, we're only adding it per month. but It'd be nice to just have to run a script and just write it all in one shot. You can reuse this for any of the other uh, type of spreadsheets that you have uh, that have multiple tabs. And you want to combine that data into one sheet. But so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the tools option up top, and then we're going to click on the script editor. And that's going to open up a, another window where you're going to be able to see the script editor UI, which lets you write some custom code. And this is where we're going to do all of our scripting to combine all those different uh, tabs together those sheet names and then create the formula out of it programmatically the so first thing we're going to do is we're going to rename this we're just going to call this merge sheets keep it simple and then in here uh, we're going to declare our spreadsheet as ss short for spreadsheet and then we're going to use the spreadsheet uh, app library which is available to us because we are using the script that are provided by google uh, they also include a bunch of other libraries that we can use for Google Docs or slides or utilities or whatever you might need. For this case, we're going to be using the spreadsheet app so that we can manipulate the data on our Google Sheet. So we're going to get the active spreadsheet. We're going to set that. And then now we're going to declare a variable for sheet and sheets with an S because we're going to get all of our sheet names together. So that's going to be ss.getsheets. And now, whoops. And now we're going to loop through all of those sheets to get the name out and add it into an array. So we're going to declare an array called sheet names. I'm going to set that open uh, to an open array, an empty array. And we're going to open up our for loop here, which is going to start off real simple with i equals zero. And then i is less than sheets dot length. And then i plus plus to iterate through it for each in, for each next um, uh, item that we have in our sheets uh, variable. So within here, we're going to do sheet names dot push, which is just a function to allow you to push data into your array. And we're going to do sheets I dot get name. So what this is going to do is it's going to get the sheet name from all the sheets that we grab from the spreadsheet. And we're going to shove it into sheet names uh, as a position in our array. So let's go ahead and console log this before we move forward, just so we can see how everything's gonna look. You can say sheet names, and then sheet names. So when we run this, we should see an array that includes the sheet names that we have. So combined going through all the way to October. So the next thing that we're gonna do here is we're going to take our sheet names and then we're going to create the data set 
that we need to query for. So going back over to our formula, we can actually copy this. What we wanna do is we wanna create this little section over here within the curly brackets, or actually including the curly brackets. So let's go to the bottom of our script here and we'll just put in double uh, backslashes as a comment so we can reference this uh, just to make sure that we have the right format. And so we're gonna start off and say var data range equals to the curly bracket, opening curly bracket. And then now within here, uh, we're gonna create another for loop and we can use I again because it's not within the same loop. And we're gonna say I is less than sheet names dot length. And we're gonna do I plus plus. And then within here, now we're going to just add in data into our data range. So we're gonna say data range equals to data range plus the sheet name. So sheet names I. And once we have that, we actually need to add in the single quotes before and after it. So there's gonna be a single quote before and then the single quote exclamation mark A through K as well. So within here, let's also just do, and because we're using single quotes, we're gonna have to use double quotes here to put it in. So we'll do that plus that, and then plus the same thing, double quotes with a single quote, exclamation mark A through K. So at the end of it, we're also going to just close this out with the closing curly bracket. So we're going to do data range plus closing curly bracket. So let's also console log this at the end of it. I'll just go ahead and copy in our variable here. And once we run this, we should see this section uh, created for the data range. So we hit run. And as you can see here, things are looking pretty good. The only problem is that we don't have that delimiter uh, that we're supposed to, which is that little semicolon at the end of it. So if we add this down here, it's gonna add it in for us as we run the code, but we're also gonna notice a little issue at the end over here, uh, which is that the last uh, sheet that we're putting into this uh, data array has that semicolon, which we can't do, because that's gonna throw an error. And just to quickly show you what that looks like, within our March data set over here, if we add the little semicolon here and then press enter, it's gonna error out. That's not what we want. So the way that we're going to uh, determine if we need to actually add it in is we're gonna add an if statement over here. So we're gonna copy this, we're gonna do an if statement. So if, and then in the parentheses, we're gonna say I double uh, equal signs to do a comparison is the same as sheet names dot length minus one, and we're doing minus one here because you have to remember that uh, we're starting from position zero uh, for I, but the sheet names that length doesn't start from zero. So it's a little bit of math that we have to suss out here, but essentially uh, subtracting one from the sheet names that length is going to allow the very last uh, loop through of the sheet names is going to equal to I. So within here, open up the curly brackets. We're going to post this same code that we had before, but because it is comparing, uh, comparing I to the last iteration, is just checking to see if it's the last loop through of this uh, loop function. We don't need the, the semicolon at the end. So we're gonna uh, delete that out over there. Then we're gonna add in an else statement, an else statement here. And then we're just gonna copy in or paste in the, uh, the thing that we had before with the semicolon. So with this, when we run the code, we should expect to see uh, the data set as cleanly as it needs to be without the ending semicolon. Hang and run. And we can see right over here that it does look good. We have the delimiter, the semicolon where we need to, which is between each data array. And then the very last one doesn't have it at all. So moving into the next step here is going to be creating our formula so we have to add in this query part uh, and also the actual query statement that we have at the end of that so what we'll do here is we're going to say var query formula equals two and then we can set up single quotes equals query and then open parentheses and we're gonna plus or add into this string here, data range. And then at the end of the data range, we're gonna have to 
do a comma, and then this is where we're going to write our select statement. So we were using the single quotes because within the select statement, it needs to be double quotes. And that's just how um, the spreadsheet formulas work. So we're going to say select star where col one or column one is not no. So the reason we're saying call one instead of the typical um, where A or where B is because since we are using a data range that is combining multiple data arrays together, it's not going to recognize what column A stands for, or what column B stands for. So you have to use column one here. And we're using call one is not null within our select though, within our where clause for, for the select statement, because we don't want to grab all the data that's within those different tabs or sheets. We only want to um, grab the data that is filled out. And column one is where our higher data is, which is our primary identifier that that is a valid row. So once we have that, I would do another comma. And then for uh, we're going to add in a one here, which one in this formula for the query formula just stands for one row is the header. So it's always going to recognize that there's one of those which is associated with the header and it won't include it um, in the rest of it. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Uh, the next step here, uh, let's actually console log our formula real quick. So let's go ahead and just say query formula is the data range, and then run this, and make sure that our formula is looking pretty good. So the query formula is this guy right over here. If we want to test this out real quick, let's go ahead in here, and then we already have the error in here. So we'll just replace that. I'm going to circular reference because we're getting the combines over there as well. So that's also one thing we're going to have to keep in mind within this for loop. Instead of starting from zero, we're going to want to start from one. Um, that way we are excluding the combines uh, tab and then we will uh, avoid that circular reference. So let's go ahead and take this formula and paste it in one more time. Make sure it's how we expect it to work. And now everything is being displayed all the way through to the end of October. Actually, sub, uh, let's delete that out because now we're going to want our script to inject it as opposed to us copy and pasting. So to do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to declare our destination sheet. So we're going to say var destination. Sheet. The super verbose of it is always helps to have verbose statements within your code. So just in case you have to read it over months from now and you don't remember exactly what you did because it was so long ago, it's always nice to just make it super clear in your code. So var destination sheet is going to be equal to SS, which is the variable we declared at the very, very beginning for our active spreadsheet. And we're going to say get sheet by name and our sheet name is combined. And then from there, we're going to say var range, we can say destination range just to be very uh, explicit with it. And that's going to be equal to destination sheet dot get range. And it's going to be one, 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 one which essentially just stands for the first row and the first column. So that's the starting position and only one row and one column in. Uh, you could use A1 notation here if you want, but I find that it's best practice to use these four parameters, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of scripting uh, with your spreadsheets. This is good to get into this habit, uh, especially when you're working with larger data sets and you want to paste it in in one shot as opposed to iterating through row by row and adding in your data. So once we have that, we're going to say destination range. Let's go ahead and copy that dot set value. And that value is going to be equal to the query formula. So when we run this code, what we expect it to do is just going to go through all the different sheets that we have. It's going to add them into a data range the, uh, the with the same format, with the uh, exclamation mark and the range, the column range that we need is going to shove that into the query formula. And then it's going to put that into position a one within our combined uh, sheet over here. So right now it's blank. When we run this code, it should execute and shove in that formula into that cell, which it did. Perfect. And if we scroll all the way down, it's giving us all the data through October. So if let's say we go ahead and duplicate this sheet over here, and then let's just call this November. And of course our dates are like not right here, but let's just set this all to November 1st. And we go back into our uh, script over here and we run it again. You can see here in the output that it's adding in November for us now. And if we go into our spreadsheet over here, we can see that at the bottom, it's all displaying November. Whoop, 
was looking at the wrong sheet. Going into the combined sheet, you can see that it's added to the end of it, all the November um, data that we have in that sheet. But just a real quick update, uh, recap here. What we did was we uh, created a formula for merge sheets. We set the uh, active spreadsheet to a variable. Then we iterated through it to grab all the sheets. We got the sheet names from there by doing a for loop. We shoved it into a empty array called sheet names. And then within sheet names, we iterated through that and then added in uh, the single quotes to the beginning and the end of it, along with the estimation mark and the column range. And we did an if statement to see if it was the last uh, iteration of that loop that we should not include the semicolon to make that delimiter within the data uh, array. And then we closed that out and we added that to a query formula that we wrote in here programmatically. And then once we had that all set up, we went back into the combined sheet to cell A1 and then we set the value to the query formula so that we can programmatically generate a combined set of data every single time that we add in a new sheet. But right, that was a lot of information. So if you did run into any issues, feel free to drop a comment in the section below. Uh, don't be shy, we're always here to help. So just leave a comment and we'll respond to you as quickly as we can. First, if you did like this video, make sure to hit that like button the best way to support this channel and help ensure that we can continue making content for you and all the other scrappy bootstrappers out there looking to optimize their operations and workflows without having to put more time in or hire more people to help them. Of course, we got lots of videos coming out as well. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and also the bell so that you get notified when we release the next video. But of course, I'm a guy called Joe. This is Bootstrapping Tools. Let's build. It's been a pleasure and we're out.